Hello, my name is Pete Jenkins from ISS Training Limited and welcome to this series of short surveillance training videos on covert surveillance. And welcome to part two on our short series on counter surveillance where we're going to be looking at a bit more detail on designing our choke points. As I mentioned, we do not want to be on one long linear route because anybody else going along that route will be kept included in our tent and it can be just third parties. So what we need to do is try and deviate somewhat so that we have a choke point here, we may have one here or here, so that the principal deviates off the route and so will any, any potential surveillance. We wouldn't have this 100 metres because a surveillance team would probably go on a parallel. So we've got to make this a couple of miles at least. The bigger the distance, the better. So anybody that's come through here, still behind the principal, and also takes a right behind the principal, then rejoins the route and continues. Anybody that has been seen there, there and there, hopefully it'll be beyond coincidence and we've identified surveillance. So this is what we've got to think about. Now, this route can be over a big distance, over um, a longer time, the bigger and the longer the better. But we commercially, we can't do that. We, we've got to get the job done. So we're going to look at this in a bit more detail now. The first thing, choke point one. If this is our start point, choke point one doesn't want to be too close to the start point. The reason being, if we've got your man in choke point one and a surveillance is coming down <coughs> and our principal has been tasked to leave and away they come, if it's too close to there, we're not helping ourselves. We've got to try and do as much as we can. The reason being is on a standby for any surveillance team, at the start, there'll be cars all over the place. Human error, bad communications, um, poor skills, on a standby, I would say 90% of losses occur on a standby when the target first moves. So they might have lost them. It might be that somebody has misheard on the radio and gone the wrong way. They've called left, left instead of right, right. So with that in mind, if we have the first choke point quite far away from the start point, the surveillance team will be allowed to settle down. They'll get in their ducts in a line. That'll be the eyeball, the backup, the trail car. So what we want to do is try and identify all of them and not have them detached all over the place. So try and get choke point at one, a fair distance away from the start point. Okay, so what about the choke points themselves? A lot of people conjure up an image in their mind that a choke point is um, like a pinch point where everybody is forced to go through. That's not necessarily the case although some bridges are ideal choke points. We have to use the route. It could be that you're parked in a lay-by and you're just counting the cars that go past you. The only problem with that, if the cars are going too fast, you will not have time to get the make, the model, the color, and the registration all at once. So you've got to be in an area or try and design the route so that traffic slows down to our advantage so that we can get those from details. A good place is a crossroads or a junction or even a roundabout for many reasons. And I'll describe these, the different types of um, a choke point. A good example, if we design our route for our principal to go straight and then take a turn at a junction. Let's say for example, we've got a T-junction. No, we'll use a crossroads, we'll use a crossroads. This is a crossroads, say for example, without traffic lights. Here we go. <coughs> We're going to use a crossroads as a choke point. So one of the team will be um, located here. They could be in a car. They could be out on foot if they've got a reason to, like um, being at a bus stop, being on a bench, um, or even in a cafe or a pub where they can actually observe and record. Now, when I say record, we can write things down, we can use a memo recorder, or we can actually use a camcorder. And video is the best way, because we don't always catch things fast enough. If there are two of you in the car, which is quite a large job, one of you might get the make a model, and the other will write the registration down. We've got to be quick, and it's got to be accurate. 
So this person that's manning this choke point needs to see the area and we're looking for a couple of things. The whole concept is about identifying multiple, having multiple sightings of vehicles, which may be our surveillance, and also a bit of a natural behavior thrown in or surveillance behavior. And this is why we say that ideally you need to know surveillance in order to detect it through counter. I'll explain why. Okay, let's say if, just for example, our um, SD route gets the principal to come and go left. Possibly it could be a bad idea. The reason being, do I just rub that out? Anybody driving up here that wants to turn left will get to the junction, look over their shoulder and come around. And the same with any potential surveillance. They will come up quick over the shoulder and get around that corner because they do not want to lose their target. Because this is happening fast, your CS will not have time to write everything down. So let's look at it this way. If we get our principal to go right, he's got to cross traffic to get there. And so has any potential surveillance team. So with that in mind, when they come up to the junction, they're likely to be held for a short while while they're waiting for traffic to pass. And while they're held, you may identify, and this is the principle behind it, any other cars that come up and may stack up behind them. Or you may see one of the surveillance team who's unprofessional, slowly creeping up behind the target because they don't want to get too close. They're not that confident. But as they close up, and any third party obviously, we're now slowed in traffic and that will give us our chance to record all the details. If and when the principal crosses the traffic and gets over, we're now looking for a little bit of um, surveillance behavior. It might be that the eyeball car that's now held is anxious to get across because they might lose the target. So you might see a bit of aggressive behavior getting around there and jumping into traffic. It might be that this car's been behind them for a long time. He wants some distance. So he sits here, even when there's no traffic, but lets him run and then jumps out. Again, it's down to the CS to identify any little anomaly like this that, um, that occurs. For those of you that know surveillance, what else do you think you might identify here? What about a handover? Let's go back to where we were. We have our principal. He's coming through choke point one, where he's been tasked to turn right. We do have a surveillance team, although we don't know yet, because it's only choke point one. And the principal does this. It might be, especially if there's no traffic lights here, that your eyeball is gonna come up on the radio net and back up, he's taken a right right, can you now? He's done a handover. So we're gonna get one surveillance car doing this. They come through and take the eyeball, they come through and take the back up and away they go. So you man this choke point for a few minutes more as well as identifying those 10 cars. And what you might see is that original eyeball coming back, maybe aggressively driving a little bit faster than everybody else to make ground and catch up. Again, so your choke point, we're not just looking for and counting cars, we're looking for any surveillance behavior. It's unlikely that a handover would take place at a crossroads with traffic lights. A crossroads with traffic lights is a good place for a choke point. The only thing is, if they get held, great, we can identify any vehicles. If they suddenly get through, if they've gone through on an amber, you may see some aggressive driving as they cross the, um, the lights at the same time. But it's unlikely you'll see a handover, especially if there's traffic lights here. The reason being, if they go straight, they're now gonna get stuck at the lights to rejoin the team, so it's unlikely. But what I would do is this. I would use a crossroads with traffic lights, but I would have my choke point further up here. The reason being, we're gonna get our principal to go left. It's likely we're gonna get cars coming left as well. But any third parties, they're gonna disappear straight, they're gonna disappear right. The only people that are likely to come left as well 
on the balance is going to be the surveillance. So if we've got our choke point here, we're forgetting or ignoring or um, discounting anybody that goes straight or right. Anybody that goes left is going to be the surveillance. So we can use a choke point at a crossroads with traffic lights. In a manner similar to our crossroads, we've got a right turn where we're going to ask the principal to go right. Our choke point will cover this area. Again, we're going to be, make this covert. So what we can't do is just have somebody stood on the side of the street with a video camera and a notepad. Or if they're parked up, any surveillance doesn't identify them because they might be used later on. So wherever your choke point is going to be, it's going to be covert again. Okay, we're going to look at this right turn. Again, the reason being, as the traffic comes up, your principal wants to turn right, it may get held in the road because of oncoming traffic, which is what we're after, or even if it gets through, it's going to slow the traffic down somewhat. So if the principal has gone right, you may have a third party that goes right or carries on going straight. And what we're going to do is, again, monitor anybody that also turns right after the principal, and we're going to count those 10 to 12 cars. What we're also looking for is we can't discount vehicles. However, if this is a bus, we can discount it. If it's a bright yellow Porsche with personalised plates and its headlights on, it's unlikely to be surveillance, but we can't always discount it. If it's a taxi, definitely don't discount it. Or if it's a motorbike. From your choke point, so then we have looked and watched all those cars go right, we've made our list. We haven't taken our eye off the ball because what we're also looking for is any potential cars that have gone straight, maybe turn around, or a couple of minutes later, come back down and join on. Because, as a surveillance team would have done, okay, he's got an offside intention, he's gone right, right on South Street, can you? Eyeball has gone straight and the team have come through. So, don't be fooled by all the cars moving ahead, they might come back. Let's look at a roundabout. At this roundabout, we're gonna use it for choke point two. So a member of the CS team is going to be manning the, um, the choke point and observing the whole of the roundabout if they can. And again, remaining concealed and covert. What are we looking for? Multiple sightings, first of all. So as our principal comes through, and um, let's say they're going to take the second option at the roundabout. So as they come through, we're going to see the principal comes through and any other cars, as we've mentioned, 10 or 12. Um, and because we're here, they have got to slow down as they hit the roundabout, unless there's a lot of di um, distance between them and their target, our principal, they will come straight onto the roundabout without even stalling and get straight with it. So we're there to identify the next 10 or 12 cars for our multiple sightings, and we're gonna write them down. What we might see um, is a handover. Now, a lot of people do handovers at um, roundabouts. If it's an unsophisticated target, a commercial target that doesn't really know surveillance, handovers at roundabouts are fine because it's slick. Because as their target comes off, all the eyeball has to do is go round and let the other team come through and they tag on at the back. Simple handover at roundabout. If it's a sophisticated target, I would never do a handover at a roundabout for the simple reason it's a great place to conduct counter surveillance from. Imagine this, you're manning the choke point. Your principal comes up. Let's say your surveillance team is one of those that likes doing handovers at roundabouts. So this will happen. Um, car three has, and he's um, approaching the roundabout in lane one of two. Back up, can you at this roundabout? We'll get yes, yes. Roger that. He's approaching the roundabout and held. The eyeball moves over to, um, to the other lane. The backup comes through. Okay, car two has, he's onto the roundabout and he's taking the first, the first towards Oxford. And the team come through and away they go on their surveillance. Now they've handed over. Now this guy can do one of two things. One is he comes up to here, which this lane means he's gonna go straight or he's gonna go right. And what he does in the end is clear of traffic. He tags on at the end of the team. Bad practice. 
or he does what most people do, he'll go round the roundabout and tag on at the team. This tells us something else. Our counter surveillance has now identified multiple sightings and also some unnatural or some surveillance-like behavior. Now, if someone's gonna do that, it's likely there's gonna be more than one of them. So now we've got him and there's somebody else along there that's also part of the team. It's gonna be a minimum of a two-man team. Choke point three, we're gonna have um, one of these natural pinch points. Um, and in this case, a bridge. So again, choke point three, um, this guy is gonna be watching for any traffic to get multiple sightings. Um, this is good if there are no parallels. If there's a parallel and the target goes across um, a bridge of some sort, it's likely that this team, if they're switched on enough, will then go on a parallel so we miss them. So we have to design it so there's no way the team can get around um, any other way. This particular bridge um, and the one in the video has got to give way. It's only narrow enough to get one car across and the people coming this way have priority. So in this case, our principal who is tasked to drive over the bridge may get to here, then he's held because of oncoming traffic. Because he's held, any potential surveillance will also be held. When the principal gets over the bridge, we then see these maybe a bit of aggressive maneuvering going straight over the bridge with him because they do not want to lose the target or their target. So a pinch point where there's no parallels, everybody has to go that way. And again, the next 10 or 12 cars, maybe even more, um, if the team are more strung out. And you've got to look at, take that into account. If this is in an urban area, your surveillance team are likely to be close together. If it's gonna be rural, as well as having cars in between, they're gonna be further spread out. Something just to keep an eye out on.